In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a multiple question quiz game inside of Unity, like this one here. So yeah, let's get started. So here I've got a completely empty scene here. So the first thing we need to do is create a UI. So let's just go ahead and create a panel first. Go to UI, create panel, and this will be our background. So before making the UI, we just want to make sure the canvas scaler is set to scale with the screen size. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put mine here, which is 1920 by 1080. Alright, so the next thing we need to do is change the color of our background. I'll make this something like this. You can change it to whatever you want. Now let's go to the UI and create another panel here, which will be the question panel. I'm gonna make it completely white, something like this. And also change the size here. Let's make it 1700 by 400. And it doesn't look white, so I'm just gonna go ahead and change the to source image to UI sprite. Alright, this looks better. Let's just name it custom panel. And place it somewhere around here. Awesome. And the next thing we need to do is create some, create some multiple choices. So for that, I'm gonna create a button here. Let's just resize this to something like this. So yeah, this one looks good. So let's place it around here. For 30 I think looks good. And for the height here I'm gonna put in minus 100. Let's also change the color of our button to something like this. And the text disappears of course i'm gonna have to change the color of our text and resize it so that it shows on our screen all right so let's select best fit and let's change the max size to 55 i'll just type in this one and now we can make copies of this button to make other options let's place it at positive 430 and also let's just duplicate both of these and move them down to somewhere around 300 yeah minus 340 looks good yep and the last thing we need to do is to add the question text yep so let's just change the type to bold here and select best fit so it's precise with our screen size And also you need to make sure the anchors stretch out on both sides here. Awesome. Alright, so let's just type in some questions. Which is the correct answer? Because why not? Alright, so now the UI is somewhat ready. But before finishing up the UI, let's just add some shadow to it. Select all of them. And let's type in shadow. And I'll just make it 10 on the X axis and minus 10 on the Y. And let's just decrease the opacity to somewhere around 70. Yep, this looks good. You can just play around with the shadow or you can uh, delete the shadow altogether. Alright, so now I'm kind of satisfied with what our UI looks like. So it's time to move on to the next step, which is coding the real quiz game. Alright, so the first thing we need to do here is make an empty game object. 
let's call this quiz manager and reset the transform and now we can just go ahead and make our first script here I'll call it quiz manager let's open this up inside of visual studio okay so so the first thing we need to do is get rid of both these because we won't need them so before we start coding inside of the quiz manager we must need to make another class for our questions so let's just go back to unity and create another c sharp script i'll just call this one questions and answers you can just call it whatever you want so this will just hold all the questions and the answers inside of it so for, i'm just gonna make this a simple class which doesn't drive from modern behavior and we won't be needing these libraries here so first thing we need to do is make a public string for the questions and in a public string array for the answers and finally make a integer that will hold the correct answer index for the questions all right so yeah that's pretty much all we need to do and in order to use it inside of unity we must mark this one as serializable field so system dot serializable all right so let's just save this and now we can go back to our quiz manager and what we can do is make a list of all these these questions so let's make a list of type question and answers And I'll just call this one Q&A. Alright, so now our list of the questions is ready. But we also need to make a reference for, for all the options. So let's make a public game object array for the options here. This will be our button. And another public integer that will hold the current question index. Awesome. And finally we can set the reference for our question text. Alright, so now let's make a void start here. So in this start method, we are going to generate the question first. So let's just make another method which will generate the questions for us. I'll call it generate questions. So the first thing we need to do here is get a random question from the list of questions. I'll just generate a random integer from 0 to the number of questions that we have in our list. Awesome. And then we will set the questions text dot text is equal to that particular question. Q&A. And I'll just put in current question here and we will get the question from our Q&A script and now we can just call this generate question at the start of our game so once the question is generated we can just go ahead and create the answers for our question all right so what we are going to do is we have this we have this array of options which will be our four buttons here and all of them has a text as a child so we're going to get the text component from the child of the button and we will just set the text to whatever answers that we have put inside of our q and script so let's just make a for loop here and this will just go through all of these buttons one by one and assign it the and assign it the corresponding answer to it So options dot transform get child so this will just get the first child which is the text component here so we know it has a text then we can just go ahead and get the text component from that child so get component text and then we will set the text here to the answers that we have in our q and list which is an array so we're gonna go ahead and set this one by one so the answers and put in the index all right so 
I know this sounds a little scary, but uh, you'll get hold of it eventually. So just bear with me here. Alright, so now that we have all of our questions, but we don't know which one is correct. For that, we are going to create a new script. We will call this answer script. So we can just get rid of all both these methods. So first we are going to make a method here which will get called when we click on the button. And also we need to make a boolean is correct to check if this uh, if the button that we have pressed is the correct one. And by default it will be false. So whenever we click on the button and it will call the answer method on the script and we will check if that particular option is the correct one so if it is we will just uh, throw in a debug.log statement saying it is the correct answer otherwise we will just let's just copy and paste this and we will just say that it is a wrong answer alright so that's all we need to do inside of the answer script and here when we are setting up the answers we need to we first need to set all of these uh, booleans is correct is equal to false at the start because we don't want any of them to be correct at the start or whenever we are changing the question and in the case when for loop reaches the correct answer index we will set the option at the particular index to be true And I'm doing i plus one because the array starts from zero and the correct and the correct answer starts from one to four. And here we are going to get the uh, answer script from that option and we will set the is correct is equal to true. So all of the buttons at the start will be false and only the on, and only the option that is at the correct index will set option to true. I'll just show you and it will make things easier. And now when we click on that particular button it will check if it is the correct one and if it is then it will just print out the debug.log statement. Alright but, but we also need to change the question when we answer it. But before that we also need to call the set answers after we have finished setting up the question. And now we can just get rid of the question that we have asked here. So it doesn't repeat itself in the future. So we're gonna use remove it and provide the index of our current question that we have just asked. Alright, so and another thing we need to do is make a method here for when we have uh, answered the question correctly so if we answer it correctly we will just call the correct method on the quiz manager but we need to make a reference for our quiz manager here so quiz manager and we will call the correct method and for now we can just call the correct method even if we are wrong so that we can move on to the next question and we will change it later of course so yeah so this correct method here will then generate the next question and of course what we can do is and of course what we can do is uh, get rid of this from here and remove the question once we have answered it so we don't want the answer to just disappear even before we have answered it. So hopefully this all makes sense. If it doesn't, it will in a moment. So let's go back to Unity, select all of our buttons. And we just need to drag and drop the answer script to all of them. And set the reference for to our quiz manager. And also let's select the quiz manager and here set the reference to our question text which is here let's drag and drop this and we also need to set the reference to our options 
So let's just lock this and select all of them and drag and drop them inside the array. Awesome. And here on the Q&A we can set the size of our questions. So for, so for now I'll just set the size to 3. Let's hit enter and it will create these three elements which will include a question at the top, the list of answers and the index of the correct answer. So we're gonna have to type in the question that we want. So let's just type something in our channel and set the answers here. Alright, so yeah, this looks good. And also specify the index of our correct answer, which is 2 here. Awesome. So let me just quickly go ahead and create all of the other ones. Alright. Okay, so all of the questions are ready and we can go ahead and try this out. But before that, we also need to add the on-click event to each of our buttons. So, so let's select all of them and hit plus here. And we need to drag and drop the answer script to individual ones. And call up the answer method. Let me just quickly do that. Alright, so all of these are ready and here it says is correct is equal to false as it should be. And now we can just go ahead and play the game. And hopefully everything will work and we won't get any error. And we don't have any errors yet, so that's good. So let's click on the quiz manager to see what questions have we got here. So this one here and the correct answer we can see is 2. So what should happen here is if we click on the second option, it should print out saying it's the correct answer. And indeed it does. Now it automatically generates the next question and sets up all the answers for us. Awesome. And now we can see the correct answer to this question. But if we go ahead and uh, answer it wrong, so it will print out wrong answer. Yep. So yeah, everything is working just fine. But there should be an error when we get to the end of our quiz. <laughs> Here it is. So now we need to resolve this error. So this video has turned out to be pretty lengthy. So I'm going to go ahead and divide this video into two parts. And I hope you liked this video and if you did, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll see you in the next one.